Top three things in my notebook this morning, number one, the VIX, number two, Europe, and number three, the 10-year bond yield. So first on the VIX, I mean, look, we're going to get bounces. We've had many bounces. I think you're going to keep getting bounces. That's what markets do. They bounce. So what do you do on the bounce? You study the bounce. Is there volume behind the bounce? Is volatility starting to break down on the bounce? Answers, no, no, and no. So again, uh, volatility would have to break. Front month VIX would have to break 1491 on our intermediate term trend signal to get volatility and or fear, however you want to label that, out of the way. So again, fear is is obviously very bullish right now, and we're going to stay with that. But again, we don't want to get whipped around or anything like that. You want to use the VIX risk range alongside our S&P 500 VIX, uh, or S&P 500 risk range uh, to risk manage market day to day to day as you get these bounces. Uh, point number two would be Europe. Uh, Europe across the board continues to outperform uh, pretty much anything in Asia or the U.S. or Latin America for that matter. And I'm talking about equities. Why? Because European growth on the margin is better. And again, we're not talking absolutes. That's not how you trade macro. You trade it on the margin. So again, if you look at the January numbers, uh, particularly the most recent January numbers across Europe, the base is much stronger on the margin than what you got in the U.S., and that's why we think European markets, there's a handful of European markets, uh, civilized places that you can go, you know, buy a house in or roll up your sleeves and have a drink. Uh, you know, the, the, these are places that are, you know, they're actually up for the year to date, uh, and we've talked about that throughout the year. So, again, there's positive divergence there, even though we're seeing some breakdowns alongside European equities that don't make us want to, we really don't want to own a lot of equities overall, just FYI. That's why you see us long commodities and bonds again. Uh, but, uh, again, I digress on that. Finally, on bonds, on the 10-year bond yield, again, uh, provided that the 10-year bond yield doesn't get above 2 spot 7, 9 percent We'll stay bullish on bonds in terms of the relative move that we've made here. Uh, as a friendly reminder, I think we've only had an asset allocation of consequence in bonds like 26 days out of the last 200 and, or 300 days, for that matter, uh, and this is one of them. So, again, uh, when bonds correct, we're going to be a buyer of bonds, provided that you don't get back above the 10-year bond yield of 2.79%. And if it does get above there and it holds there, it would have to hold there, don't forget. We'll change our mind again. Uh, so that's it.